What's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Hope y'all are having a great weekend, a great Sunday so far as we wrap up the weekend and get to our work week. We're going to keep talking about Hurricane Sam. We're also going to talk about a couple other things potentially that could develop also and pretty much finish off the 2021 hurricane list of names and then we'll enter another alphabet. We'll talk about the potential of that and also as we get into October, the cl climatology favored areas of the Western Atlantic, like the Caribbean, may begin to pick up activity. A lot of times when you get later into September, into October, you start to lose the activity in the main development region, the tropical Atlantic, and everything starts to shift to the Caribbean. And then eventually the hurricane season dies down. Um, so we're going to talk about that. Now you look here, we got Hurricane um, Sam. Sam is, I really think it's a Category 5. The latest up, last update was 11 a.m., so it's still a 145-mile-per-hour storm per this video. I know I'm making this video a little bit earlier in the day than what I normally do. Um, I had such a long week last week with being sick. My whole routine got jacked up, so I'm trying to mentally get prepared for a better week and restart my routine, get back on track. Um, so I'm going on knocking out this video a little bit earlier, so that's why I'm doing so. But we're going to talk about this hurricane because it is like an absolute buzzsaw right now. It is very strong. It's probably the best looking hurricane since, I would say, Dorian or maybe Michael as far as structural, structure wise. It's technically not as strong as Ida right now, but it potentially could be. If there's going to be some more um, hurricane hunters to go out into the storm, and we're really going to see how strong this is because I think it's potentially stronger than 100. 145 mile per hour storm. I really do think it's stronger than that, but it's got an just an incredible, um, nice outflow to it. Anti-cyclonic flow uh, wrapping around the opposite direction as the rotating hurricane, and uh, that just tells us that it's ventilating. It's probably still strengthening or either holding its own, and it's really just a, a incredible looking hurricane. It's not affecting anybody. It's just out there spinning out in the water, um, so that is good news. Um, so uh, let's get a little bit closer look at this as the sun is beginning to set on Sam as you can tell the screen is dimming that means the sun is starting setting out there of course this is more east so the sun is setting from east to west but um, the structure of this hurricane um, really I wouldn't call anything perfect but you know th this is just a, an incredible looking hurricane I mean there's really no weakness to it um, you look at water vapor What's crazy about this is you can actually see, and this is water vapor, so this pretty much shows us the most, most moist points in the atmosphere and the driest points in the atmosphere. And in the eye of the hurricane, you can actually tell where the dry spot in the hurricane is, meaning you know there's no convection in the eye of the hurricane. It has such a tight um, eye or center of circulation that there's you can actually see the dry air in it according to this water vapor right here. So... It's very healthy, and it's a very strong hurricane. It's potentially a Category 5 hurricane. It's obviously a major hurricane. So uh, we'll look at the latest update, and this is the latest, L well, no, this is 2 p.m., 2 p.m. update. It's a 145-mile-per-hour storm, but I have a feeling that it is stronger than this, and uh, we'll get another update here shortly, or in the 8 p.m. update, and we'll see if it's bumped up to a 155-mile-per-hour storm or 160 mile per hour storm, which would make it a category five hurricane. But you notice there's areas of other interest too. We really won't talk about this, but these areas out here, 50% chance right here develop in the next five days, 60% 60, 60 chance develop right here in the next five days. These areas could actually be your next name storm. This one could be Victor, one could be Wanda. And after those two names, we move on to the next um, list. The hurricane list basically starts over and we'll start over, and I really think we will eventually do that here in the week, coming weeks. So um, I will mention, if you guys have not subscribed, definitely hit the subscribe button. Uh, like the video if you like it. Thank you all for the amazing support. This past week has been a big-time growth. I passed 8,000 subscribers, and um, so I really appreciate all the amazing support, guys. Um, if you're new viewers, um, my setup will get much better here in the coming weeks as I'm uh, able to get a little bit more money together. Almost got the money together and the funds together to upgrade my equipment and get a better computer. So y'all can watch this in 1080 as opposed to 720, which is all my videos showing right now. So it can be a lot more clear for you guys and maybe the audio can get a little bit better. But, um, you know, yeah, this is the 11 a update. This is the one I did not mean to show you guys. But you lay, look at the latest... Um, 18z which is the latest model intensity guidance it has it pretty much holding strong to a category 4 potentially category 5 hurricane 
Like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a Category 5 hurricane right now. We'll get some latest, the latest data here in the coming hours, and we'll see if it upgrades. I think it will get a little bit stronger to maybe 150, 155 mile per hour storm. But right now, Category 4, and it's going to maintain that as the um, environment in place, including sea surface temperatures, the incredible um, upper level wind pattern right now that it has where it's ventilating, has great circulation. And it's basically creating its own environment. Any dry air around it cannot penetrate uh, the center of circulation of the storm because it has such a great outflow and great environment that it's creating for itself because it's such a powerful hurricane. So you look at the latest GFS, and we'll show the GFS and the European because I really am worried for areas like Bermuda and potentially areas of eastern and the Atlantic Canadian areas like uh, Nova Scotia and even um, areas up here in Newfoundland. Uh, Bermuda is sitting right in here. So you look at the latest GFS, and this is from 12Z, so we'll have the next one here in an hour or two. Um, and this gets, this is Bermuda. It gets real close to Bermuda, but it's just east of Bermuda, so it doesn't affect this. The thing is, this is a very compact hurricane, so it's going to have to get very close to Bermuda or just flat out directly impact it for Bermuda to see any impact as far as wind and rain and storm and major storm surge. Very, very compact and strong hurricane. Almost kind of reminds me of Hurricane Andrew in a way because Hurricane Andrew was an incredibly small storm, but an incredibly intense storm. So there's a chance when you have such a strong hurricane like this and a compact hurricane, the hurricane winds might only extend you know, 30 to 40 miles out from the center, which really isn't that far. But going forward here, it does get caught up. One of the things that's changed over the last few days is the cutoff low. There was a stout cutoff low that was sitting over the mid-Atlantic and northeast. That has since shift a little bit more east, which for us in the eastern U.S. kind of stinks only because we're not going to get as cool weather towards middle to later part of this week as what I was thinking we were. So if you notice, you look at your 10-day uh, forecast across the eastern U.S., especially from the southeast, up to the mid-Atlantic, you notice that your probably high, potential high temperatures and potential low temperatures are all going up. There's a reason for that, and that's because this trough is uh, shifting a little bit more east. But it, that means it's also good news for the tropics, because that means that even if this interacts with this, it's going to interact with it much more east. So yes, it might pull it, and as you can tell, it starts to move out to sea, and then it gets yanked by an up on um, by this right here and we'll get a little bit closer here and we'll look at heights and anomalies but here's that cutoff low we're talking about here it starts this it's, it's, it's about to you know head out to sea and not bother anybody as it wraps around the subtropical ridge and then it gets pulled in by that cutoff low and yanks it a little bit north and almost flirts with uh, Newfoundland and tries to affect them but a big time ridge um, looks to almost uh, prevent it from moving any far north and it gets kind of trapped and just meanders there and eventually kind of fades away so maybe this big town ridge could save folks in ultimately the northeast and areas of southeast uh, Canada like Nova Scotia and Newfoundland so we'll watch that I think there's still a lot to figure out but I think things are getting a little bit more clear and we can pretty much set in stone that this is not going to affect the eastern United States but Bermuda Y'all are definitely in the crosshairs, and y'all have to watch out because y'all could get slammed by this, but we don't know yet. The European looks much more worrisome for you folks in Bermuda, as Bermuda is sitting right here, and check it out. Very small hurricane, very strong hurricane. At this rate, <coughs> it um, the thing that I'm wondering with the Euro is it is initializing the storm a little bit more weaker, which therefore is trying to say that the path is going to go a little bit more west. So... The GFS could still outright win here, but if you're looking at the European, the European just almost plows us directly into Bermuda. It's, it's noticeably much further west, but in the long term, it goes much further northeast and doesn't interact with any kind of upper trough and doesn't even come close to affecting anybody in North America in general. So in the mean term, in, in, in the short term is what I mean, this thing is not going to lose any steam. So in the next few days... Um, the storm is right around this area. It's going to travel right into this area where you have uh, temperatures Fahrenheit in the low to mid 80s. That is uh, ample enough, basically, ocean heat content to maintain a major hurricane, which will be the case over the next several days. So um, you look a little bit closer here at the EPS ensembles here, and Bermuda is right in here. 
and look at all these lines that go over or close to Bermuda. But you notice up here in the long term, um, a lot of members go into Newfoundland, even Nova Scotia, areas of Can uh, Canada. I keep wanting to say Kansas, Canada. Um, so we have to watch out. And you look at the members down here, they're picking up on some tropical development that we're going to briefly talk about here in a second. That could be Victor or Wanda. And uh, it really looks like in the long term, this is eventually going to be short-lived storms and go a little bit north in latitude, but we have to watch out. There's also a small signal deep in the Caribbean we need to talk about. And that is what we're going to talk about now. So we're getting into the time of the year, and we'll look at this real quick. <clears throat> so um, we're, we're in the downslope as far as hurricane season. But the thing is, is there is a secondary peak season around the first or second week of October. And that's normally when climatology favors the Western Atlantic, which is the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, so this is an area we have to watch. And we've had a lot of dangerous scenarios last year, um, two, year two years before that with Hurricane Michael that impacted the Florida Panhandle, I believe, October 10th or 11th of 2018 that was uh, I think the only major hurricane that directly hit um, this uh, America uh, in 2018 but it happened really late in hurricane season so you look at what these storms normally do in October and uh, it doesn't happen much as you can tell over the last um, 100 years there's only been 30 to 49 named storms um, but what they normally do is they like to generate off normally energy off Central America, which we call a CAG sometimes, and uh, they'll generate here and then they'll meander northward and a lot of times will hit areas of Florida. That's why you got to watch out for the west coast of Florida this time of the year. But sometimes they'll even get into the Gulf of Mexico and uh, the Gulf states is definitely a big threat here. Um, <clears throat> but this is, you know, the, uh, you know, the Bahamas, Cuba, um, Jamaica you got to watch out for these areas this time of the year now you look at the latest GFS it does pick out pick up some energy down here as we're going forward here we're getting into the first couple days of October you notice all this green here that's a lot of tropical moisture so you know there's gonna be a favorable phase um, in place also you, you notice the L popping up here this is pretty far out this is about eight nine ten days out but uh, you have to watch out to see if anything develops here as we're going through the next 14 days. You don't really see anything on the latest operational GFS. But if you look at the, the GFS ensembles, the ensemble mean here, look at all the lowering that occurs right down here. Keep your eye down here as it yellows up. Those are potential lowering pressures um, that it's saying could really could poten potentially develop over the first week of October and uh, then some big tropical systems and look what they all do <clears throat> they all do exactly what this shows right here they develop right here and then they all meander north to northeast and that's exactly what these do so it looks exactly matches up exactly what climatology tells us so we need to watch out I'm not trying to conjure up anything that's not even happened yet but uh, there has been some uh, whispers out there in the weather community that this area is definitely going to begin to heat up in the next several days. So we'll continue to watch that. So the good news is I don't see any immediate threats for the you know the actual lower 48. But Bermuda needs to watch out for Hurricane Sam. That could potentially be a dangerous storm for you guys. But that's all I got, guys. Um, I'll give you all another update tomorrow evening. Um, but hope you all have a great start to your week. God bless everybody.